Well, good evening, Legacy Life Family Church and all those that are uh, on uh, the internet and, and in the, via the electrons. Welcome to uh, Legacy Life Family Church Wednesday night Bible study. My name is Pastor Richard Masterson and I will be sharing with you tonight my topic or title is simply Jesus, the only way. And my uh, focal point verse will be John 14th chapter verse number six and it reads as such i am the, jesus said i am the way the truth and the life no one comes to the father except through me and that's what uh we'll be we'll be hitting upon uh hopefully i'll uh, be able to uh make it through w within a reasonable amount of time but uh if not uh, it'll be to to be continued so let us let's begin our journey tonight with a with an opening word of uh, prayer, and then we'll, we'll dive on into, into the word of the living God. Father, I thank you, and we thank you as a body of believers tonight that you've, you've uh, graced us with your presence and you've given us uh, the ability and the uh, insight to, to do thy will tonight. Father, I pray that the, the, the lesson which will uh, be presented tonight will uh, be a, a word in season for those, Lord God, that that are uh, needing uh, to hear directly, specifically, and succinctly from you and you alone. Father, we pray that you're, you would impact hearts for time and eternity tonight. We pray that people will come out of darkness into the kingdom of your dear son, which is Jesus Christ. Father, we uh, ask that you would uh, illuminate uh, your word in a, in a very real and tangible way in, our, in, uh, in the hearts and lives of, of those that will will hear and see this message uh, tonight. I thank you, Father, for the opportunity that we get to, to be the hands and feet of Christ tonight, that we get to share the uncompromising word of, of, of the living God tonight. And, and for that, I am very grateful and thankful. I bless you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Jesus, the only way. This is one of the most exclusive, if not the most exclusive statement to ever come from the lips of our Lord. I mean, it, it, you t you're talking about defining, you're talking about narrowing the scope uh, of, of things that from a, a Christian perspective or theological perspective, there's uh, many, many religions, many uh, uh, spiritual groups that, uh, that, that claim uh, to be the way. Uh, but Jesus, Jesus uh, exclusively and specifically stated that he is the way uh, uh, to the Father and he is the gateway uh, to eternal life. And so we're going to, we're going to walk down this path tonight and, and see um, just uh, why he said what he said and, and, uh, and what it means to us as a uh, as individuals, uh, those that know Christ as Savior and Lord, and, tho and those that don't know Him uh, yet, in, in in that like manner. All right. He. Uh, uh, oh, uh, before I get going too far, uh, the 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 skeleton or the uh, the the main thing uh, from this uh, Bible study I got from this book. Just a little plug called the uh, the Joshua Code by O.S. Hawkins. Uh, this book has been with me for many years and I, 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 I so enjoy uh, reading and rereading it uh, uh, and it's, it's just been a blessing. So uh, the, the main skeletal uh, framework of this Bible study comes from this book called The Joshua Code and uh, uh, it is, uh, you can get from all your, your main outlets, I believe, and from uh, Christian distributors and things of that nature. Okay, let me, uh, let me continue. Uh, it says, he is the, Jesus is the one and only way to eternal life, the door through which we all must enter. Without him, there is no way, there is no ultimate truth, and there is no real eternal life. He makes a three-pronged uh, uh, statement uh, that's rich and, 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 and so beneficial uh, to us as individuals. And, and as I as I unpack it tonight, I, I hope you, you too will uh, get to, to experience Jesus in a, in a very real and tangible and new way. Uh, it says, and, 
And if that declaration was not enough, meaning that what Jesus said, he's the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus went on to say that he is the only way for you and I to get to the Father, Father God. He is the only way. There's no other. I mean, many people, uh, many religions say that uh, there's many ways and many roads that lead uh, to heaven or eternal life. But Jesus exclusively says that he is the he is the door. He is the gatekeeper. And um, and we'll see that as we as we continue. I ask you this question. You you personally, is Jesus Christ really the only way or is he simply one of many ways to eternal life? And just let that uh, simmer a little bit uh, in your in your thought process, because uh, that doesn't sit well with uh, uh, with us today, with people today, because uh, everybody claims to have their own truth. Everybody claims that uh, there 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 is many ways or uh, to uh, to heaven, not just one uh, exclusive way that Christianity uh, states and holds uh, holds dear to. So uh, that uh, that may rattle, that may rile uh, a, a few individuals as uh, as they hear those type of uh, statements or claims being made uh, by Jesus, because uh, Jesus is the only one that has backed that claim uh, with uh, with his very life, and you will see as we as we continue. So uh, I want to I want to take us to. The Lord is, Jesus is always asking questions. If you, if you have spent any time reading uh, the Gospels, he, he loves to ask questions uh, to those that he, he comes in contact with, and, and especially to his disciples, those that he is pouring out his life into uh, for that uh, uh, roughly three-year period. Uh, he, lo he loved to ask questions to, uh, to see if, uh, if uh, they are, getting all that he is he is giving uh, not just in word but in in deed so I want to take you right now to uh, one of the one of the areas where G Jesus asked some uh, uh, some specific and poignant uh, questions uh, one day when he was in uh, Caesarea Philippi uh, and we're going to turn to uh, Matthew 16 chapter starting at uh, verse 13 Matthew 16 starting at verse uh, 13, where he had uh, made some, uh, again, some, some claims uh, to his disciples. And just to set the stage, Jesus was, uh, and his disciples were uh, in that region of uh, Caesarea Philippi, uh, not, uh, not long or uh, earlier uh, from, the, from that time, Jesus did what we uh, uh, know to be the Sermon on the Mount which was uh, from Matthew uh, 5 through 7. And so they were, they were not uh, long from having sat with many other individuals, uh, people, to hear Jesus dialogue, to hear him preach, to hear, to, to hear him share the words of life. And so it was like, okay, Jesus, I, I, let, me ask some, let me ask them some questions since we, they just heard the Sermon on the Mount. So Jesus asked uh, his disciples, uh, at this time, and starting at uh, verse 13. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he was uh, asking his disciples, who do you say that the Son of Man is? Who do you say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, and others Elijah, but still others Jeremiah, uh, or, or, or one of the prophets. They had many uh, replies, uh, but that was, he, he said that question um, uh, simply from the standpoint of, of, of trying to uh, gain and understand what the people that he had just preached to, what were they saying? What, are, what they have been saying and expressing? And so he wanted to get, uh, I guess you could say like, uh, polling data, because today you, you, you see it all the time uh, uh, on the internet and things of that nature, uh, uh, what people think, their, uh, their, 
their opinions and things of that nature. And people, uh, people spend a lot of money to, to hear the thoughts and opinions uh, uh, from people or individuals. So Jesus was just uh, polling his disciples to see what are the people saying? Who am I? And so his disciples shared that, that with him. And so uh, he, he got what they were, what they were uh, uh, saying, people were saying he, he, who he was. And so Jesus uh, went on, got the overall feel of the, of the, uh, of the crowd and uh, in, in how they viewed him and what they believed him to be. Uh, so he, he got the big picture, and now he's, he's narrowing down the, the focus, the focus uh, with a series of uh, other, other questions. And, and, and it says, uh, Jesus also uh, asked uh, or inquired, who, who, do, who did they think he really was? Who did they think he really was? And, and, and we, we, we asked the same question today in, in, our, in our individual lives, in our, uh, in our culture, in our society. Um, who do we think Jesus is today. Some, uh, we just believe he was a, a great teacher, a phenomenal teacher. Some believe that he was a, uh, uh, a, uh, a great religious figure. Uh, uh, but uh, many don't believe that he, he was the only and, and true son of God. He, many don't believe that he was uh, or is uh, a, one of the uh, persons of the Trinity. And, and so, as even as he was uh, 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 talking to his disciples, um, many, many had uh, different uh, thoughts and opinions on who they viewed him to be. So many today never seem to be able to get uh, out of that verse, of, of, of just that first verse, a verse of who do people say that the Son of Man is. We simply live in a world that is much more interested in what men say than in what God says. And that is very true today. We, we value and take highly the thoughts and opinions of man versus what thus saith the Lord has said and, 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 and his word that has been proven over the annals of time. We, we still uh, refuse and, 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 and live in disbelief. Uh, of, of what the written word has, uh, is saying and continues to say from generation to generation. Uh, we, we would rather take the opinion and thoughts of, of, of man over that of God. So Jesus uh, was asked this, this uh, another probing question. So he took it from the, from the, uh, from the main crowd to, to his disciples individually. He he asked them uh, something. They he asked them, uh, "Who do you? Who do you say that I am?" He broke it. He he brought it down to the to the personal to the personal up close and personal level. Who do you say that I am? As it states in in John, uh, excuse me, not in John, but Matthew 16 uh, verse 15. He said to them, "But who do you say that I am?" And then uh, we, we read on in 16, Simon Peter answered, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. This question is a personal one. This question deals with personal conviction. What about you? You and only you. You and no one else. Who do you say that he is? That's what it boils down to, personal conviction. And conviction is, is simply a firmly held belief or opinion. The quality of showing that one is firmly convinced of what one believes or says. Who do you and I say that he is? Because it, it, it doesn't matter from the standpoint of, uh, of, the, of the crowd or the masses. It, it matters very much. Who do you as an individual, who do, uh, who do I as an individual say 
that he is because it, it, it becomes personal at that, stand, at that point. And as John, as John 14, 6 says, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And he is the only way to the Father and, in, and to eternal life. That's, uh, he is the only way. And we got we to gotta come to grips with that. We got to really deal with that because it's, there's, we, we're comfortable with the, uh, we're going along with the crowd, the safety and number aspect. But when it all boils down to it, it's who do you say that he is? Because your eternal uh, uh, salvation rests with the, the answer to that question. All right. Peter said, and, and, and everybody, we know uh, how, uh, how we view Peter from, from Scripture. Peter is the one that's going to uh, insert foot in mouth before activating mind. He's going, to speak, he's going to speak. He's going to act. He's going to respond without thinking. And, and, and in this case, uh, speed, uh, Peter, he spoke, I believe, by and through the power of the Holy Spirit. Without hesitation, he spoke and made a great confession. He says, you are the Christ the son of the living God. Without hesitation, it, it resonated with him because of uh, uh, Peter's experience, Peter close proximity to the Savior over uh, a, a given length of time. He, became, he knew within his heart of hearts, with, within his innermost being, that Jesus was who he said he was and who he claimed to be. It was real to Peter. He had that personal conviction and understanding. I want to ask you this. Have you ever wondered what motivated him? Think about it. What would Peter have to gain uh, if, it, if it wasn't a personal, a uh, real experience? What would motivate him to come out and, and blurt out a statement of, of, of such great confession and conviction? What do you think would uh, have motivated him? Because as we know through uh, the church history, since we're on the backside of all this that's taken place, Peter, Peter ended up dying for his, uh, for his faith. Uh, Peter had to, to give up life because of that which he claimed to believe in, that who he claimed to be, believe, that Jesus was who he said he was. And that costed him ultimately his life. And even to the point where uh, Peter, he became that martyr and to the point where he didn't feel that he was worthy to even die the same way or death that uh, Jesus Christ died. Peter requested to be uh, crucified upside down. I mean, that's what, what conviction and, and connection did he have with Jesus that motivated him to, yes, give up his life, but even, hey, I don't want to, I, I am not worthy to die the same way that my Savior died. What kind of motivation is that? Because we, we in, our, in our own selves, we are, we are motivated by uh, various things, uh, and, and especially in today's culture, uh, uh, with everybody having a, a viewpoint, a opinion, and if your opinion doesn't jive with the masses, uh, especially if you're, if you're sharing it or doing it through the, the electrons or over social media, things of that nature, guess what they get to do to you today? That word that, uh, that's being uh, pushed around now, you get, you get counseled. They counsel you. They, uh, they will make things rough in, in the uh, social network realm that will, uh, w that will uh, make you uh, non-existent in essence uh, 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 to, your, to your group out there. So the motivation uh, today is not like it, it, it needs to be and should be uh, the conviction that we, we as uh, believers have. Uh, am I or do I choose to follow Christ even if it costs me everything? Uh, the songs we sing on any given Sunday, month, uh, Sunday morning, I surrender all, all to Jesus, I surrender. 
Does that, is that a true, is that a true song or is it just one of those things that uh, we're at church, we're supposed to sing it and it, it sounds good and uh, I'm okay with that. But does it have the, the, uh, the backing, the motivation, the conviction that am I willing to lay it all down for this person named Jesus to give my life up that I may spend eternal life uh, with him in, in heaven? Those are questions that uh, I want you to consider as, uh, consider as we continue on, uh, on tonight. You see, Peter didn't give his life just uh, for pluralism, meaning for an idea that there are many roads to heaven. He didn't do it for that. He didn't do it for inclusive, inclusivism either. The idea that everyone is eventually covered by the atonement. He didn't do it for that. No, he did it because he insisted that Christ is the only way to eternal life. He had a made up mind. He, in his heart of hearts, it was a done deal and nobody could sway him or, or, or dissuade him from thinking anything different to the point that he was willing to give up his life for Jesus. I just, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm humbled to, to be uh, numbered in that, in that group that all to Jesus I surrender. All to him, I freely give. I want, uh, I want to encourage you if, you, if you haven't got to that point where it's beyond the group to the personal, make it personal tonight. Make it personal as we continue in this study that you're going to have a decision to make. You're going to, you're going to surrender all or you're going to continue to go the way of, uh, of the masses, of those that... Uh, like the like the like what Jesus has done, like the name, but yet not there, not quite there yet, not ready to surrender all in order that you you gain all. I pray that you you would come to that decision uh, tonight. I want to uh, transition. Let's talk a little bit about truth, the very nature of truth. I want to talk about that, and, and I'm, I'm so thankful, uh, even before I, I, I get to talk, uh, that uh, Josue Lugaro last week uh, did a masterful job in, 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 in sharing about truth. And so I'll just, I'm just go not going to re, uh, rehash what he, he shared. I'm just going to uh, hopefully uh, add uh, a, a little a little something to uh, that which you, you may have already know or heard. But the very nature of truth, I want to say this, is narrow. Think about it. The very nature of truth is narrow. And, and especially in today's culture and world, you have your truth, and he has uh, his truth, and all truths are equal. <sighs> I beg to differ. Not so. Uh, that, is, that is not truth. Uh, as, 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 as we know it in, in, uh, in the uh, economy of, of God. The very nature of truth is narrow. And let's just think about some of the, the common truths that we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. I know many of y'all do not, as a, if I'm not all that uh, good in math, but mathematical truth, think about it, mathematical truth. When we say Two plus two equals four. Uh, that's pretty narrow. Why, why does it have to just e uh, equal four? Can it not equal three or whatever I uh, deem it to be? But in the, mac uh, in the mathematical scheme of things, mathematical truth, two plus two always equals four. What about scientific truth? Scientific truth is narrow. Just think about uh, what uh, temperature does water freeze at? 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Water freezes. That never changes. That is always the same. Scientific truth. Scientific truth as far as uh, gravity is concerned. What goes up at some point will come down. It doesn't change. It is there. It's stated. Scientific truth is narrow. What about geographical truth? The last time I checked, 
Clovis, New Mexico is still around 90 some miles away from Lubbock or Amarillo. It hadn't changed. It's still the same. So geographical truth is somewhat narrow as well. What about historical truth? We have uh, history states and documents uh, historically. Let's take, for instance, Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln was shot by John Wilkes Booth, according to history. And that was in Ford Theater in Washington, D.C. That's, uh, that's history, historical f uh, uh, truth. He wasn't stabbed, and, he, and it wasn't done in Dallas, Texas. It was done in Washington, D.C. Historical truth is pretty narrow. Why can it not be wide and, 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 and have a variety? Because it, uh, truth is narrow, always narrow. Now let's go to theological truth. Theolog theological truth is narrow as well. But we have a problem with that in today's uh, society. Everything else is, uh, we won't, we won't uh, argue much about. But when theological truth deems and claims uh, a narrow road, we go ballistic. Because why does it have to be narrow? Why can't, why can't you Christians be all inclusive? Why can't y'all just love and let love and, and, and things of that nature? Well, theological truth is narrow. It's the nature, uh, it is the nature of all truth. It is, it is narrow. Jesus said in Matthew 7, Verses 13, 13 through 14, it reads like this. Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it, because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. That's Matthew 7, 13 through 14. All truth is narrow. So we got to come to grips with a, uh, from a theological standpoint. All roads don't lead to Christ. All roads don't need, lead uh, to, the, to the God that uh, has made exclusive claims that he is the way, he is the truth, and he is the light, and life. And no man comes unto the Father but through his Son, Jesus Christ. I know it's narrow. I know it's it, it's it's uh, it's difficult for you to try to digest and 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 grasp now because the way society has stated we should all just uh, uh, kumbaya it together. But God is God is a God that has a uh, that has a way that and 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 His truth stands, and God's way will. Uh, uh, unfold. So the question that I asked you earlier, who do you say that he is? Is he the Christ, the son of the living God, like Peter stated profoundly and, 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 uh, and, and energetically? Is he that to you? Or is you still on the outside looking in, trying to see at some point in time in life that the, uh, that the narrow the narrow uh, uh, truth that, uh, that states who Jesus says he is, is going to sometime or somehow change. Not so. It's not going to happen. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and, the, and forever. The, our God has given us the way. I pray that you and I take it. Jesus is the only way to the Father's house. Indeed, he and he alone is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to my father's house unless they come through Jesus. He is the door. And guess what? It's an open door. He will welcome you in. All are welcome. But all have to make a decision. All have to choose life rather than death. Choose God's way rather than the world's way. 
The choice is yours. The choice is mine. So in closing, I want to uh, I want to leave us with some application. I want to leave you with uh, with that. Uh, uh, yes, you have that decision to make. But the verse that I started with, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes unto the Father but by me. And I want you to take time this week to commit it to memory. Memorize it. Put it in what I call, I like to call my tool chest. I, 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 I like to uh, commit scripture to memory because I may not have the book in front of me at all times, but I can have it hid in my heart that at a, any given moment, it comes to my memory, to my remembrance, and I can share it with those that God would place within my reach. So I want you to memorize this uh, verse, meditate on how Christ is the way, on how Christ is the truth, and, and on how he is the life. And he is still asking you and I today, who do you say that I am? I thank you for this time. I pray that it uh, ministered to you. I pray that it will continue to do that which the Father has designated and desired for it to, uh, to do in your hearts and life. That all would come to the saving knowledge and relationship of, of, of Jesus. That is my hope. That is my prayer for you tonight. And let's close in prayer. Father, I'm, I'm thankful. I am, my heart is overjoyed that we get to do this, that we get to share. Even today, in these United States of America, we still get to share the gospel of the living God out loud and on purpose. We are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to every man that believes. Father, I praise you and I thank you that many lives would be transformed tonight because they've heard the word. I pray that they would receive the, uh, the word and that they are forever changed and become children of the Most High God. We thank you, we bless you, and we look forward to another exciting time uh, as, as we move towards Sunday of gathering together and, and lifting up the name of Jesus and sharing the word that transforms a heart out of darkness into light. We bless you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. We'll see you next time.